Well, hello everyone and welcome to AJ 111 Criminal Procedure. My name is Tony Farrar and of course I am your instructor for this semester. So this lecture is going to be a review of the course syllabus. Now a couple of things just to point out. Please make sure that you go through the introduction orientation module in its entirety and I'll show you what the course canvas looks like at the end of this lecture so you can kind of get a visual but the, the the very first part that you're going to go through is that introduction and you want to go through that whole module in its entirety you want to uh, watch this video in its entirety and you want to also read the syllabus in its entirety because there's a lot of good information in there to help all of you be successful so let's go ahead and jump right into our review for today. So again, this is the syllabus review. So criminal procedure AJ 111, the section number is 4288. We are online for this particular semester, which most classes are for spring of 2022. So at the top of the page, if you're following along, there's my information. I am located on the Menifee campus. There is my office phone number, my email. I do uh, respond to Twitter. I also have a link to the MSJC Criminal Justice Club Facebook page, uh, which are a group of individuals, uh, students that are interested in criminal justice. And a lot of times we get together and we do things um, outside of class, whether it's a tour somewhere or some type of training or what have you. Uh, but it's a great place to interact with others that are interested in criminal justice. And then finally, I have a link to the Career Ed or Career Education website which will um, basically give you access to a lot of things going on within career ed to include the different degree paths and programs uh, along with counseling information, et cetera. Okay, so even though we are online again, uh, typically when we are on campus, I'm at the Menifee campus, uh, room 3003, that's in the 3000 building. Here are my office hours. And then for us, for online, please note that office hours are virtual via Zoom on Wednesday nights from 6 to 7 p.m. And when we get to the uh, course canvas at the end of this lecture, when I show you, I'll show you where the link is located to where you can access my meeting room as well. I'm also available at other times by appointment. Email is the best way to get in touch with me. Um, if you do send me an email, please do me a favor and use this example in the subject line. So you see the example for our AJ 111 4288 criminal procedure. And the reason for using this format is because I teach quite a few courses and a lot of times there are students in several of my classes. It's really hard for me to remember exactly which class you might be in. So using this in the subject line allows me to identify who you are a lot quicker be able to respond back to you uh, quicker and to be able to get whatever information or answer your question in a, in a more expedient fashion so that would be very helpful also if you do email me please use your msjc college email account do not use your uh, personal email now if you're gonna submit a written assignment this semester and in this class you are going to via canvas please do me a favor and submit it in microsoft word if you send a document or upload a document in another word processor format like pages or word perfect or through google docs not a google doc but through the system of google docs there's no guarantee that i'll be able to open it if i can't open it i can't read it if i can't read it i can't grade it I can't grade it, you can't get points for it. So please do me a favor and make sure you use Microsoft Word. Or if you happen to use Google Docs, which is important, it needs to be a separate attachment. So the actual document, I would convert that into a PDF format and upload it directly into Canvas, if that makes sense. If you have questions, please, please let me know. And then finally, make sure that you set up your email um, and if you need help, you can uh, contact the, hall, the uh, college help desk, but also set up your whatever electronic device that you're using, whether it's your phone, your tablet, your notebook, your computer, etc. Make sure that it's set up to where you can receive the different emails or announcements as well. 
Okay, so please note, and we're at the bottom of the page if you're following along, the syllabus is a living document and subject to change during the semester. Typically, I don't like to change things or add things, but sometimes I have to, right? There might be a mistake on a particular quiz question. Maybe something was left blank inadvertently. Whatever the issue is, um, if I do make a change or a correction or something somewhere, I will let you know right away via an email or an announcement through Canvas. And of course, if you have any questions about the course, please let me know. Um, also, all the assignments and due dates are listed in the syllabus. So again, make sure you review that in its entirety because it is your responsibility to follow all of those due dates. It's not my responsibility to remind you of tests, quizzes, or term papers, et cetera, because all of that is in the syllabus. Now, with that being said, you need to know that I will. I will send out reminders. A lot of times I send out a reminder at the beginning of the week, letting you know that the module's open. I'll send out a, a reminder towards the end of the week, letting you know that, hey, your assignment is due this time because the module is closing soon. And speaking of modules, this course is formatted in a modular format. So typically it opens on a Monday morning at eight in the morning, it closes the following Sunday night at 11 p.m. and you do your work between those two times, if that makes sense. And I'll talk a little bit more about the modular format in a minute and I'll show you what it looks like when we get to the course canvas. So what then is this class that you are taking? Well, again, uh, AJ 111 criminal procedure, uh, this course really examines all those procedural aspects, if you will, from arrest to the final disposition or adjudication of a case. And, you know, we'll look at the principles of constitutional, federal, state, and civil laws and how those apply to law enforcement. We'll focus on the procedural aspects of the court system all the way from the arraignment, the very beginning of a hearing, if you will, through preliminary hearing, jury selection, trial, jury instructions, and the, the final sentencing, acquittal or guilt or innocence, et cetera. And some other topics we'll look at will be things like attorneys and what their jobs are and judges and what their jobs are. All of that stuff is gonna be incorporated in this class. So with that being said, here are kind of lists, if you will, of the program learning outcomes, the course learning outcomes, and the course learning objectives. Now, I'm not gonna go through each one of these individual, but as a program, Criminal Justice and Corrections, our program here at MSJC, these are, are our learning outcomes, okay? These are the course learning outcomes for the class, and then these are some of the objectives, right? The course learning objectives. Okay, so the textbook. Uh, this is a wonderful textbook, you guys, and it's the third edition. Now, note that there is a newer edition, the fourth, and you can use that one as well, but I, but the third is is fine as well, so you don't have to get the new one if you don't want. Um, so let me give you my pitch on the textbook. A lot of students do ask me, hey, professor, do I really need the textbook? And let me put it to you like this. Typically, I do the video lectures in about the same time frame as I would for a class. So you might have a 60 minute, maybe a 45 minute to a 60 minute video lecture, which is similar to an on-campus class, right? And there is a lot of content in this course, a lot of definitions, uh, a lot of different content, things that you have to learn, etc. And it's very difficult for me to fit everything in every chapter in that video lecture. So having the textbook will allow you to kind of fill in the blanks, fill in the gaps, if you will, those areas that I couldn't get to. It helps you understand some of the different aspects that we're going to be talking about. And it really does help add context, application context to what we're talking about. There's a lot of interesting case studies in the textbook that when you read those, they apply to the different definitions and theories and things like that. So you can kind of understand, not just, not just memorizing things, it's how you apply what you're learning, if that makes sense. So I suggest the textbook, um, actually I would highly suggest it in this particular uh, course, whether it be the e-version, the loose leaf, which you have to get a little binder for, or 
whether you order the paperback textbook or what have you. So that's my pitch for the textbook. Uh, next up, we have the penal code. It's not the primary textbook, but we are going to refer to this book from time to time. If you don't have a copy, that's okay, because you can access the information at this link right here. It's a legalinfo.gov for all California-related codes. And if you don't know what the penal code is, basically law in California is statutory, which means it's written. And if it's written, it's got to be housed somewhere, right? So they have these books of penal law, and they're called the penal codes. And every state has one. Texas has a penal code. Florida has a penal code. California has a penal code. And this is where all the laws are. So it is important to at least have access to specifically the California one in this case. And again, you can access it right here. All right, so let's talk now about check-in. So remember I said that the course runs week to week. Usually it almost, well, almost always it opens on Monday at 8 a.m. and it closes the following night at 11 p.m. But because our first week, that Monday falls on a holiday, this class will open on Tuesday the 18th because Monday's a holiday, right? And will close on Sunday the 23rd at 11 p.m. Now, during this time, this is the orientation, okay, the introduction part. So make sure that you check in during this time frame using the discussion board as your official check-in for class. And as part of that check-in, you're going to need to complete a short 10-question syllabus quiz. So again, check-in opens on the 18th at 8 in the morning. You're going to go through that orientation introduction module. You're going to read the syllabus in its entirety. You're going to watch this video review of the syllabus in its entirety. You're going to check in with part one, the discussion board check in one, and it's in that orientation module. I'll show you what it looks like. And the second half of the check in is the syllabus quiz. Now, failure to complete the check in, both parts, is going to result in you being dropped from the class. And the reason for that isn't because I mean, it's because that typically there's a wait list for this class. And therefore, if you fail to check in, you will get bumped out of the class and another student will take your place. So this, I'm just kind of stressing the importance of making sure that you get yourself checked into the course. Okay, so what are some of the guidelines for this class? Well, this is a somewhat fast-paced class with a lot of reading and information that I'm going to provide to you weekly. And because of that, you need to keep up with the reading. Don't just rely on the PowerPoints or the lectures, the video lectures, to get you through the class. Some of the legal terms may be difficult at first to understand because you don't know what they are, right? You're just learning them. Therefore, you need to read the textbook chapters in order to fully understand them, right? and to help add context to the subject matter. So not just memorizing to be able to apply it. Again, another pitch for the textbook. Now, in some cases, you might have to look up a word or a term on the internet, penal code, or in a law dictionary. But if you have a, a problem or a question about any concept, et cetera, let me know and I will discuss it, discuss it in Canvas in the discussion board area. And we'll talk about it more, and I'll show you where it's at in just a little bit. But there are two discussion areas. I have a general discussion board called the Donut Shop. Yeah, I know. And then I have a student-to-student -student discussion board area called the Squad Car. But if there's an issue, let me know, and I'll post it, because chances are if you have a question, someone else does as well. So this isn't an easy class and it's going to require some work on your part if you want to do well. However, this class will, will be extremely rewarding from all of the information and knowledge that you're going to gain about the process, the criminal justice process, how it works. Okay, so what are some expectations then? So let's take a look at some of the expectations. So we know that you're going to participate and complete a variety of activities that will achieve some of those learning objectives that we went over. Well, we didn't go over them individually, but I showed them to you at the beginning 
of the syllabus, but here are some of the following expectations. The first would be to read the required materials. <clears throat> so that means review the PowerPoints, the lecture notes, the articles, and your textbook chapters. Next, uh, view the weekly videos relating to each chapter. There's an introduction to each chapter, and there might be an article or a video there. Uh, again, the video lecture with the PowerPoint and the case study videos. Next, participate in what we call thoughtful and timely discussions via the discussion board. And we'll talk about discussions in a few minutes. Complete the online matching assessment exercise. This is a non-graded exercise that helps you learn key terms. So you'll have a word on one side, a term, and then you'll have a definition on the other side, and you're basically going to match them up. You can take this as many times as you want to help you learn key terms. Next, complete the online and timed quiz or quizzes. Complete the online and timed exams. Complete the case study. And then finally, complete the midterm writing assignment. Now, please note that failure to participate in discussion boards, missing quizzes or exams, failing to turn in any other assignments, or missing a combination of these activities may cause you to be dropped from the class. All right, it's really important that you track the due dates and do all of your assignments. And just kind of a plug really quick so I don't forget, Usually at the end of the semester, about 5% of the students in a class will email me saying, hey, I'm four points away from a B, or I'm four points away from an A. You need to know the first thing I'm going to do is go back in your grade book and see, did you do the extra credit assignment? I have one extra credit assignment already kind of built into the class. As we go through the semester, I'll throw out some additional extra credit assignments. I'll look to see if you at least did all of your assignments. Okay, does that kind of make sense? So all the points really kind of do count. So make sure that you're doing the best you can to complete those assignments so you don't end up as one of the 5% at the end of the semester. Synchronous meetings, this is, our course is basically what we call an asynchronous class, which means that you kind of, we have the discussion times, or the discussion board and the, the quizzes, the exams and, and things like that. But typically you do your work between a time period. And, the, and for this class, it's between Monday and the following Sunday, okay? But during the semester, we are gonna have some opportunities to meet together online via Zoom. Now it won't be mandatory, just like office hours. As I went over, I have office hours on Wednesday nights from six to seven, it's not mandatory, but these meetings will be announced in advance and will be opportunities for anyone to exchange information, ask questions, cover major topics. An example would be after we kind of get settled in, I'll, I'll call a meeting via Zoom for anyone that wants to get a little bit more information on how to write their midterm paper. Now there's a whole module for the midterm paper and we'll talk about that in, in a few minutes, uh, which, and there's a video on how to write your paper, et cetera, but you might have other questions. So we'll, will basically dedicate a meeting time where you can pop in and ask any questions that you want to. So those are gonna be some of the synchronous meetings that will come about. So what if this is your first online class? For some of you, it might be. For many of you, it may not be. So make sure that you're ready for online learning. You know, you've already read about some of the expectations, but, but you need to make sure that you really understand what's expected of you. So I have a couple of helpful links. The first one is to the MSJC online learning page. And the second one is to the same website, but to a kind of an area that has video tutorials, like how to upload a paper, how to navigate through Canvas, how to set up my email, all those things like that that are very helpful to make you successful in this particular class. Next, we have technology, and if you're following, following along, we're right here. So you are responsible for your computer equipment and the internet connection independent of the campus. So you will need to plan your coursework to be able to accommodate computer issues or problems. And what I'm really asking you to do is have a backup plan. Of course, if the college website goes down and Canvas goes down and you can't access assignments, we'll take care of all that. I'll make sure you have extra time and we'll get it done, no need to panic. What I want you to do though, 
is to have a backup plan should you run into some issue on your end, which saves you the grief from falling behind. So that's, that's kind of what I'm saying in a nutshell, have a plan, okay? And to help you, I wanna go over a couple of the more, kind of the larger areas, maybe not more important, but some of the functions of Canvas that are typically used the most, all right? First of all, make sure that you check your Canvas notifications or announcements at least two times a week, okay? and take the time to kind of navigate through the Canvas course shell. Now, one of the most important areas in Canvas will be modules, and because this is where your weekly assignments are. And I'm gonna title each module so you'll know exactly which week the information is for. Remember I said the course goes in weekly modules. So an example would be module one will be titled, titled unit one or week one. And therefore, unit one or week one will contain all of the assignments needed to complete week one, right? It makes sense. It'll have the audio lectures, the video lectures, the PowerPoints, the links to videos and articles, the exams, the quizzes, guides, discussion boards. Everything is built in there. The only thing that is not in that those weekly modules, you have a separate module for your case study, a separate module for extra credit, and a separate module for your midterm writing assignment. Otherwise, everything is in those modules. And I'll give you a visual in just a few minutes. And the goal for, for doing it like this is to be able to have all of your assignments housed in one area to, to make it easy for you to find things each week, right? So you're not clicking all over the place trying to find out where stuff is located. Next would be discussions. This is where group discussions are going to occur on various topics. Next would be announcements. This is where you're going to find announcements for the class, including relevant information on changes to, you know, maybe a, an exam, maybe a question didn't get copied over correctly and part of it's missing or, or somebody found a mistake somewhere. I mean, th little things happen sometimes and I wanna send something out letting everybody know that there's gonna be a correction, or maybe there's a guest speaker in another online class and I'm sending it out for everybody if they want to attend, or maybe a career fair or an actual job opening. That's the importance of making sure that you set up your electronic device to where you can receive those type of announcements. Next would be the grade book, and that one speaks for itself. That's where your grades are. And then finally, extra credit. It's a separate module. There's a built-in extra credit assignment in, your, in this particular course. And then throughout the semester, I will throw out a couple of additional extra credit assignments as well. Okay, so instructional methods. How are we gonna learn all this? Well, you know, the lectures, the news articles, visual aids, video, PowerPoints, video lectures, class participation, guest speakers, discussions, written assignments, quizzes, case studies, exams, all of that we're gonna use. And again, just note that you're always welcome to attend any of the other guest speakers or you know, kind of pertinent class sessions, if you will, in a different class. So let's say perhaps I'm having a uh, prosecuting attorney or a judge or somebody showing up in a criminal law class and you find that interesting, I will send that out so you, along with the link and the date and time, and if you wanna pop in and, and watch that, that's something that you can do. Now, if you need any help throughout the semester, please email me and let me know whatever it is that I can do to assist you in being successful in this course. But also note that academic support is available to all students at the Learning Resource Center at MSJC or through the help desk, which are now online. Counseling is online, help desk is online, uh, LRC is online. You can find all of this academic support online as well. Okay, now because we are an online class, it is important for us to understand our code of conduct specifically as it relates to discussions. Okay, uh, the you know code of conduct for students is available in the MSJC catalog. I encourage you to read it. Uh, if you don't have a catalog, you can find it online. And really what I'm talking about is something that we call netiquette. It's kind of network etiquette or 
etiquette of cyberspace, for a lack of better terms, if you will. Um, in other words, netiquette is a set of rules for behaving properly online. Uh, there's an author, Virginia Shea, who has defined a lot of issues and discussed them at length in her book called Netiquette. And here I have posted a link to a kind of a brief summary of her core rules if you want to learn a little bit more. Basically, what I'm asking is that, you know, we're, we're all different, right? And thank goodness, because if we were all the same, life would just be boring. Um, but we learn by listening to other people's kind of opinions and how they view things and how they say things. That's how we learn. Um, and that's really important. So when it comes to discussions, et cetera, uh, I'm really just asking you to uh, be professional and watch your language. And it doesn't mean that you can't disagree, but you can disagree the right way. And enough said, because we're all adults. All right, a couple of quick websites that you will find helpful will be Cornell Law and a web, uh, link to the Supreme Court. Um, exams and quizzes, note that the quiz and exam questions are going to come directly from your textbook. The, the lecture, the video lecture, the PowerPoints, or you know any other designated article, video, etc. that I might post um, in your course canvas. And each week you're going to have a reading assignment, a video lecture, uh, and a short 10 question quiz covering that corresponding chapter and either a discussion topic or or fact or fiction uh, topic. It just kind of depends. Sometimes it's a discussion, sometimes it's a fact or fiction. Anyway, you know, in addition to that, there will be three chapter exams, a midterm writing assignment, and a case study. Also, in each weekly module, there's a matching, basically a key terms exercise. Because there are so many terms, right? Uh, in order to help you learn them, I've included basically a matching exercise where they have the definition on one side, the term on the other side, and you match them up. And it's a non-graded exercise. You can take it as many times as you want to help you become more familiar with some of the definitions. Okay, discussion boards. These are typically reflective. Therefore, they are meant to make you think about something, right? And maybe think about it enough to want to research it and, and consider other perspectives and opinions, et cetera, and then provide a response. And you're going to have a total of 14 discussion boards and one course check-in discussion board. Each discussion board is worth up to 10 points. And, and when responding to the discussion boards, Make sure you read the information or watch the corresponding video in the discussion board module area there, okay? And respond with a complete, well thought out response. Now, you can submit your discussion in one of two formats. The typical way would be written. You could come up with a discussion post, uh, whatever your response is, and you could post it. It's text, it's writing. Or you can do it via video through Canvas Studio. If you do it via video, make sure that you either upload the video or the link to the video. I need to be able to access the video, okay? If you do it in the standard format via text, okay, writing, in order to get full point credit, your response must be five sentences in length. Don't copy the response from another student's post. The more focused and thought out the response, the more points that you're going to get, okay? Don't just respond with, I agree or similar. Tell me what you think. Sometimes there's not a right or wrong answer. I'm just looking for what you think. Now, with that said, feel free to respond or comment on another student's post. That's how we get the discussion going, thus the name discussion boards, right? And for that, you can certainly say, hey, I agree with you, uh, or hey, I don't agree with you. What about this? Those, that's a great way to get a discussion going. So enough on discussion boards. And if you have more questions, just let me know. All right, so we're gonna talk about the case study and extra credit really quick. Now, these are also in your course canvas and I'll show you where they're at. So your case study is gonna be the Curtis Flowers case. And I give you a bunch of information. And here are the questions I want you to answer in this case study. So I'm telling you what I'm actually looking for. Now, you can submit this assignment in one of three formats. You can write it, and there's directions for writing. You can create a PowerPoint, and there's directions for PowerPoint. 
or you can do a video presentation. Now, if you do a video, you can create the video project using Canvas Studio, or you can use YouTube and then submit the link to the project. Just remember, um, you know, for a PowerPoint, you need to be creative, but you need to answer all the questions, okay? So in any format that you do, written, PowerPoint, video, you must address the questions, okay? And for PowerPoints, you can put in pictures, you can embed video, you can do whatever you want. The more creative, the better. Extra credit is the Ronald Cotton case, okay? And I've got a lot of information on that. And again, in a lot of these, there'll be videos. So when you do the Curtis Flowers case, there's a video in Canvas, okay? So it's not just, you, you can watch this video and learn more about the case, et cetera. So extra credit is the Ronald Cotton case. Here are the questions that I want you to answer. And again, same as the previous assignment, you can submit this in one of three formats. And here are the same guidelines. Okay, so kind of summing it up before we move on to um, the actual assignments, okay? Uh, you know, again, this course follows that weekly modular format, right? So all the video lectures, quizzes, exams, discussion information, everything is going to be in those weekly modules and available on Monday mornings at 8 a.m., except for the very first week, right? Because Monday's a holiday. Now, all assignments are due in by 11 p.m. on the following Sunday. So as an example, and here we are right here, the first week, this class will open on Tuesday the 18th at 8 a.m. because Monday's a holiday. You'll have until the following Sunday, the 23rd at 11 p.m. to do everything in the week one orientation introduction module. And that will include reading the syllabus, watching the syllabus review video like I'm hoping that you're doing right now, going through the orientation introduction module, taking the syllabus quiz, and checking in on the, the discussion board. With that said, you need to know as a general rule, there really are no makeups for assignments because you have six days to complete each of the, the weekly assignments. So it's really up to you to get it done. Now, I do know that stuff happens, right? I know we have families, jobs, kids, and all that other stuff, and emergencies you know, jury duty, military deployment, medical stuff, I get all that, okay? And those things will be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. But don't just disappear for three weeks and then pop back in because you might be dropped from the class if you just go. So communicate with me so I know what's happening. I don't need to know every detail, but I do need to know kind of what's going on um, or respond to emails if I send them to you, okay? Now, again, please keep in mind, it's your responsibility to make time for completing the assignments. Please, 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 please do not wait until the last minute. Many individuals are procrastinators. If that's how you roll and you can do it, that's great. But a lot of times that's not how people are and you find yourself in trouble. While I will do my best, to remind you of due dates and other information, ultimately, it is your responsibility to know when things are due and to plan accordingly. And to give you some helpful hints, here's typically what I see with students who experience problems. First is the inability to keep track of due dates. You need to be able to kind of keep track of assignment due dates and, and don't wait until the last minute to do your assignments, right? Set time aside on a certain day, etc. Second, thinking that because there are many little quizzes and discussion boards that missing a few won't matter, where the reality is it does because missing assignments add up quick and before you know it, you're behind. And then you find yourself in that 5% that email me at the end of the semester asking me what you can do to make up assignments when you missed a bunch of assignments during the actual semester, if that makes sense. Okay, and then last, make sure that you set up whatever electronic device you're using to be able to receive notifications or announcements once they're posted. Okay, so here is the grading scale. 
And here are the graded assignments. So you have three chapter exams. You have the chapter discussion boards and the check-in, your syllabus quiz, your midterm paper, your quizzes, your case study for 530 points, okay? And then I do have the built-in extra credit assignment worth 15 points. And more than likely, I send out other extra credit as well. Okay, some important dates. I'm going to let you read this at your leisure. If there's anything that I can do to help accommodate you or to make sure that you are successful in this course, please let me know. And I will do the best I can uh, to assist you in that, in this endeavor, uh, again, of being successful in this class. Uh, next, we have your written assignment. Remember, this is a separate module in your course canvas. And in that course canvas is a, uh, in that module is a video on how to write your paper, how to do citations, how to make a reference page, it's all there. Uh, there's a video, a PowerPoint, even how to upload your paper. Um, and then don't forget during the semester early on, probably once we get settled, I'll have a separate meeting or office hours to where if you're still not sure how to do the paper, you can log in for a little bit and we can go over some of those things as well. So don't panic. Uh, here is what I want you to write about. And here are the directions for the paper. And then finally, before we get to the schedule and we look in the course canvas shell, uh, plagiarism. Copying a part of a sentence from a text article or a news story in a paper without acknowledging the source, right, citing the source, is plagiarism. Even if you copy what it is and change a few words, it's still plagiarism. So the best rule of thumb is, hey, if you didn't think of it yourself or it's not common knowledge, you need to reference it or cite it. If in doubt, cite it anyway. And I have some more information here. All right, so now let's drop down to the course outline. So this is kind of the schedule. So you can see the weekly modules. Week one is this orientation, right? Opens the 18th, closes the 23rd. This is the syllabus review, the discussion board check-in and the quiz. Week two is gonna cover chapter one, introduction to criminal procedure. There's the video lecture. You have the key terms, right? That non-graded exercise. You have a quiz and a discussion. And you can see a lot of them look the same. That's for consistency. Now we're gonna go down here to week six, where you can see chapter five, probable cause and arrest. You still have to do your, your weekly quiz, right? You have the key terms. But here you have your first chapter exam chapters one through five, and then you have your discussion. So they all kind of look the same, and you'll see when the chapter exams are inserted. Here you can see in week 12, your midterm paper is due. Go a little bit further, week 15, your case study is due. Week 16, extra credit. So that's kind of how it looks. Now we're gonna log into, this isn't published yet, but this is the home page for your course. You can see the navigation bar is over here. You may not have as many navigation links as I do, but if you go down through here, there's a lot of information about the class, a couple of videos to watch. Here's my information with my email. Okay. Office hours, six to seven. Here's the link to my, my basically my online virtual office. Okay, here's how you kind of get started using Canvas. So I have a little instructional video for you there. And you can go back up and you click start here and it'll take you to the introduction. This is the orientation. I have a quick little video for you, some more information. Here are the two discussion areas I talked about, the donut shop and the squad car. And we'll talk about those a little bit more. You can go down to the bottom right and you can just click through each one of these areas. This is the orientation, okay? Or, if you go up along here, you can click the module view and it'll show you what it looks like. This is the introduction that we were just clicking in, okay? So this is all of it right here. And as you go down through here, you'll see this is where the syllabus is at or you can find the syllabus here, either one. Here's your course check-in, here's your syllabus quiz, okay? This is what you're gonna be doing in week number one. Now I have additional modules. All right, this is how to use Zoom. 
There's a link to the Criminal Justice Club. Okay, you click on that. There are some cool websites that I thought are interesting if you like certain TV shows. Okay, so this kind of shows you some of the different things I have here for you. Uh, here are videos of the Bill of Rights, and these are super important because the Bill of Rights play a big role in, uh, you know, criminal procedure, right? And here's all of the amendments and little videos that kind of go with them. Okay, so this is all important content. And then the court systems, if you want to learn a little bit more about the court systems. Here is your midterm writing assignment module. I have the video on how to write your paper and how to do citations. If you don't want to hear me talk, here's the PowerPoint. Here is your midterm writing assignment. Here's how to upload your paper. And I haven't confirmed who the tutor is this semester, but once I do, I will put this information in. We have our own AJ tutor. Here's the Curtis Flowers case. This is your case study. It's the same thing as in your syllabus, the same information, but it's got some videos for you to watch. Okay, so again, and it tells you how you can submit this assignment in the three different ways. So that's just kind of a view on how you look at that. Um, here's your extra credit assignment. It's the Ronald Cotton case. You can see how that's, and here's the other extra credit. And when I, when I publish other extra credit, please note that when you click on this, it's gonna show some examples of other extra credit. Don't just submit stuff. Wait until I put it out there because I'm not sure what the extra credit, the other extra credit's gonna be. So don't arbitrarily submit something because I'll end up denying it. Wait until I send it out. Here is what a unit or a module looks like in the module view. Week two, chapter one. You can see all the different things and you can basically click through, click through it. Here's the overview of the chapter. You can go to next. Here's the introduction. I want you to watch that little video. Next, you have the actual video lecture, okay? Next, I have the PowerPoint. Next, I have the key terms quiz. Remember the non-graded assessment quiz. Next, I have the quiz. Then finally, I have the discussion, okay? And a lot of times there might be some videos or things for you to, to look at. And then what's new this semester, actually it's not super new, I've done it a, a semester or so now. Instead of responding to each student's discussion post, I'm gonna go through all of the discussion posts, read them all, including the comments that everybody makes on other discussions, et cetera, or other posts, et cetera, and I'll grade them. And then I'll do a wrap up video talking about how everybody kind of responded and what the, uh, kind of the sentiment of the class was and who thought what. I might even throw in a couple of students' posts that I thought were um, interesting, et cetera. And, I'll, and it'll be like a four to a five, maybe a six minute video at the most. You can comment on that video if you want, you don't have to, but I'll post that video on Sunday night right before the module closes and you can go in there. So instead of reading an individual response from me, uh, which might look similar to some of the other responses to students, I'm just going to do a kind of a wrap up video, if that makes any sense. And a lot of students find that um, a lot better, if you will. And then finally, you have the unit summary. And here I've got some extra things for you to look at. It's at the end of each uh, chapter or module. Uh, the OES is a good website for case studies. I have Cornell Law, the legal information and codes. Uh, California co uh, courts, if you want to learn more about the courts, um, and how a criminal case works. So these are just some extra resources. Okay, now we're going to go back over here. Okay, we're going to hit the home page and we're going to look at two more things. Now, I talked about the two discussion boards. The general discussions are in the modules. Okay, so if we were to go to modules and you go down to the first, you can see here, chapter one discussion, it's in the module. But if you go to discussions on your navigation bar, you'll see the donut shop and you can click on that. And this is a general discussion board for everybody. So it may not be me. If you have a question, you can post, hey, where do you find this? And another student could see it and jump on and go, hey, it's over here. So this is kind of for everybody to use. And you can post questions here as well. 
Now, the other discussion area is one that I don't monitor. This is the squad car, okay? And you can see I don't subscribe to that. This is for student-to-student -student contact, all right? So you guys can kind of talk amongst yourselves, et cetera. So you can access this from going to here. I mean, you can start here. When you click start here, remember, you get the video and things like that and kind of get you going. Or you can click on here for syllabus, here for modules, uh, here for the donut shop. So you don't have to use the navigation tool for the donut shop, but you can um, if you want. All right, so I'm hoping that that really helps you. Um, I would suggest that you kind of click around here just so you can kind of get become familiar with how the, 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 the layout looks. Remember, module view sometimes is a little bit better, um, and you can always click through each page. So with that being said, if you have questions, please let me know. It's going to be a great semester. We're going to learn a lot. It's going to be awesome, and I look forward to learning with all of you. So that's going to conclude our uh, video of our syllabus review.